See, a lot of times what we're trying to do with all of our emotional state is we're trying to feel what we think the end goal is, but a lot of times it's the emotion that's the opposite that's preventing that from being felt. So how many of us actually feel loving towards our husbands or our wives? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you think about the last time you had an argument. You just think about that for a moment. Can you put yourself back there, the last time you had an argument? Did you feel very loving then? Right at that time no. you were arguing? No, okay. But it only for me it only lasts a brief moment. Before and there's it the intellectual justification. Yeah, and, and it used to last a lot longer, but now it's a bit transient because I can I put another spin on it. And that's the problem. And I say, well, it's my <laughs> choice that I act like that. And that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. You see, what we do with our soul is, here's our soul, right? Here's our soul. The emotion that we're feeling at the moment inside of our soul is anger. Let's say, in this case, it's anger with a man, right? So then I go down the road of saying to myself, all right, I've got this anger, but, but really, this is only a little situation, so I can convince myself it's small. Or I can say to myself, oh, really, this is not that important, so I can convince myself now that my anger isn't that important. And I go down this track of convincing myself away from the feeling that's really there. Now, many of you have got into that habit because this is what the New Age movement generally teaches you to do, right? It teaches you to do this. Here's where I am right now. Here's where I know I should be if I'm in a state of love. So here's the state of love that I'm aiming for sometime in the future. And what I do is I intellectually jump from one place to the other and in the process ignore this emotional baggage in between. You follow me? And what I'm suggesting to you is totally the opposite of that. What I'm suggesting to you is if you want this to be real, this state of love to be real, this emotional baggage is going to have to be experienced and released from you. Then that state will be automatic and you won't have to try to put any spins on it, you won't have to try to skip over to it, you won't have to try to intellectualise yourself to that point, it will just be an automatic place that you live in constantly without it trying at all. Does that appeal to you? To do it without trying? Anger doesn't have to be a negative emotion. Sorry? Anger doesn't have to be a negative emotion. And you can have both of those emotions together. Um, that, is another, that is another spin you've put on it, mm. to be honest. Right? The spin is, the spin is that anger, what is, it, what is anger really? Fear. It's fear. Suppressed fear, right? So the truth is that when I'm in a state of anger, right, here's my anger, I have already put a cap on my fear. Yeah. Right? I've already done that. Now, what do, how does God want you to live your life? To put a cap on any emotion? No. No. So let's say, what is my fear? Yes. That is where I've put a cap on something else that I don't want to experience. Let's say it's terrible, like, how do you spell grief? Grief. Right. Right. So what I'm doing with my life, if, if I say to myself, oh, anger is not such a bad thing, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing, I'm just saying it's there, it's present, and it means that I've already suppressed myself. I've already suppressed my soul if I'm in a state of anger, no matter what anger I'm feeling. It might be just a smidge of frustration. It might be just a smidge of annoyance, but it's still a suppression. Do you follow me? And because I've suppressed what's underneath, which is some fear about feeling some deeper emotions underneath, and underneath there, there might be terrible feelings, like really dark feelings of, I feel like I'm empty inside, right? Or I feel like I'm unworthy inside, or, you know, some really big, dark emotions might be there. And what we have a tendency to do then is just cover that one with that, cover that one with that, cover that one with that, and then tell ourselves that that's fine. I, I still think that I think that you can have all of those things and acknowledge all of those things um, and still have love as well. No, well, the truth is, right at that moment, while this is in you, if you you can acknowledge them, but uh, but at them, if you're not choosing to experience them, then what's happening is the world is experiencing them for you. You are projecting it straight out onto the world. You follow me? So, so. You can, you can say, oh, I know these things are in me, but that doesn't help you. Knowing them doesn't help you. Experiencing them is the thing that helps you. 
it's the experience that will cause you to grow. On all of the new age paths that are around, around today, pretty much, all of them tell you to, or teach you how to avoid your experience. And I mean, I mean skip over your true emotional experience. You remember in the DVDs, um, how many of you saw the Second Days DVDs? Yeah? Do you remember that um, there was a channeling in there through, of Lucinda? Lucinda? You remember that? Yeah. And Lucinda said that she was in the sixth sphere of spiritual development, mm. right, which was this, in this intellectual place right, of, of the highest amount of development in natural love that you can achieve without God. And that was where the ego resided. And that's where yeah, the ego resides and so forth. And she was in this place, and what she realised was that she wasn't being real about what emotions really existed within her. And she had to actually go down to a place in the third sphere where she learnt what emotions were within her. And when she learnt what emotions were within her, she was quite surprised, because she had intellectualised herself over them. You follow me? Mm. And what I'm suggesting to you is don't do that. Don't do that. It's a fictitious progression. It's not real. Now, you can feel that a lot when you go to different places or different people, groups of people, and you can feel sometimes, can't you? Mm. That, hang on a sec, this person's got a nice, happy face. They, they seem like they're acting nicely towards me, but I can feel this really yucky thing coming from them at the same time. What's that? Mm. Right? You notice that sometimes, how it mm. feels fake? Yeah. Well, you need to trust that it is fake. <laughs> And it's fake because the person has skipped over their experience and manufactured a condition of love intellectually, but there's no, there's, there's all these bottled up emotions suppressed in there as well. And with God, you're not going to be able to do that. Which is fair enough, isn't it? Mm. Like, don't, do you think God would want you to do that? I mean, God would want you to just feel everything you feel. And, 